I wish to begin my speech by giving you a brief information about the, also the related uh, topics deal, deal, uh, dealt or uh, which we deal by the, uh, by the parliamentarians for global action. The mission statement of the parliamentarian for global action reads as a non-profit, non-partisan international network of over 1,400 legislators in approximately 1,130 elected parliaments around the globe, aims to promote peace, fostering democracy, the ro rule of law, human rights, gender equality, conflict prevention and management, and population issues by informing, uh, convening, and mobilizing parliamentarians to realize these goals since 1978. The objectives of PGA's Peace and Democracy Program are twofold. On, th on the one hand, PGA aims to foster greater political leadership and improve legis legislative tools for lawmakers to give effect to already existing commitments to curb and control small arms and light weapons. This is a very important uh, subject in order to prevent the genocide or must or must atrocities, uh, it is important that we should have an arms trade treaty. Finally, the General Assembly of the United Nations adopted the arms trade treaty on the second uh, on the second of uh, on the second uh, of April. PGA was uh, re uh, represented uh, in the endeavors since more than uh, f uh, 10 years. And now uh, the task of the countries are, is to ratify this arms trade treaty as soon as possible. United States of America, my country, all the EU member countries, and all the uh, African countries, and all the leading countries accepted uh, or approved in the General Assembly of the United Nations uh, this agreement. This is very important. Uh, the consensus wa was blocked by Iran, Syria, and North Korea. All the other nations were ready to reach a consensus. It was blocked, and therefore uh, it has been adopted by the General Assembly. With a positive contribution, uh, con uh, contribution of the PGA, members of uh, 130 uh, countries, uh, we, we, we achieved a very successful result. Genocide or mass atrocities are always, was always and were always and are today also a big problem. There are many examples. I won't go in details in these examples because in the previous presentations our, fr our friends uh, emphasized. But uh, for example, before the Second World War, Stalin, leader of the Soviet Union at that time, designed to cause a famine in the Ukraine which perished seven million people in that farming area known as the bread basket of Europe between 32 and uh, 33, 1932 and 33. In December uh, nine, uh, 1937, the Japanese Imperial Army marched into China's capital city of Nanking known as the Rape of Nanking and pro proceeded at that time to murder 300,000 that is half of the civilians and soldiers in the city between 1937 and 1938. The Holocaust of, of uh, this Holocaust in the in Germany uh, during the Second World War is very no, very well known. Six million uh, were killed. Uh, the Khmer Rouge killed two million people, a fifth of the entire Cambodian population between. Uh, 1975 and 1979. 200,000 deaths in Bosnia-Herzegovina genocide between uh, 1992 
and 1995. The Rwanda genocide uh, uh, has been uh, uh, explained uh, many times uh, and uh, more than 800,000 people uh, 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 lost their lives in, in, in 94. The genocide in Darfur, Sudan has claimed 480,000 480, lives and displaced over 2.8 million people in 2003. Urumqi, the capital of East Turkestan, China resulted in at least 200 people killed in, in recently in 2009. The Myanmar, Myanmar, also known as Burma, military junta is, uh, is waging genocide against minorities. By 2011, the ethnic cleansing wiped out over 600,000 people in the Myanmar genocide since, it is independent, since its independence uh, in uh, 1948. Approximately 530,000 people are internally displaced due to this conflict with an additional 140,000 refugees in camps in Thailand. Besides these examples, the Russian uh, Republic of Chechnya suffered two conflicts in the, recent in, the, in, the, in the recent past between 1994 and 1996, nearly two years of brutal fighting, an estimated figure of more than 100,000 people died. In 1999, a massive Russian military force again entered Chechnya, the exact death toll from this two year, two year conflict is unknown, unofficial estimates range from uh, 25,000 to 50,000 dead or missing, mostly civilians in Chechnya. It is an irony, therefore, of our time that our advances in the technological and social world have been paradoxically linked to the excess of our own destructive capacities like genocides and world wars. Unfortunately, we have all become familiar with genocide in the 20th century. When there is genocide, there is nothing new as a pattern or motives behind. And allow me to quote the Honorable uh, Mary Robinson, former president of, Re of the Republic of Ireland in the addressing to the graduating class of Yale Law School. The word, he says, the word needs lawyers more than the word is willing to admit. There can be no global justice unless the worst, uh, worst of crimes, crimes against humanity, are subject to the law. In this age, more than ever, we, uh, more than ever do we recognize that the crime of genocide against one people truly is an assault on us on us all, uh, a crime against humanity. The International Criminal Court is doing uh, a certain, is contributing to, to some extent. Now more than 122 countries ratified the uh, International Criminal Court is working, is doing uh, some uh, positive contributions, contributes in a positive way, but uh, I hope that uh, the ratification process will go on. Uh, and now to prevent genocide and uh, geno genocid genocidal conflicts, it is certainly important to understand their own roots. While conflict has many causes, genocidal conflict is identity-based, genocide and related atrocities tend to occur in societies in, with diverse national, racial, ethnic, or religious groups that are locked in identity-related conflicts. It is not simply differences in identity, whether real or perceived, that generate conflict, but the implication of those differences in terms of access to power and wealth, services and resources, employment, development opportunities, citizenship, and the enjoyment of fundamental rights and freedoms. These conflicts are fomented by discrimination, hate, speech, 
inciting violence and other violations of human rights. In terms of prevention, the critical step, step is to identify the factors. What are the discriminatory practices? Although they differ in details, the mission of all international humanitarian organizations are quite the same, to campaign against crimes, against humanity and genocide, but the effect uh, to be, uh, to be uh, the effectiveness uh, is not as expected. And therefore, uh, we should uh, look at new ways, alternative, uh, alternative approaches uh, in order to increase the efficiency. Now we can have a look at what can be done to have a coherent voice from the parliamentarian's point of view. After all, how one cannot, how one cannot put a value on a single bread that we take in, no one should be single-handedly decide to end our lives. It is our duty to share the responsibility of prevention of genocide and mass atrocities by promoting collaboration between concerned states and the international community. The prevention and stopping genocide and mass atrocities is first and foremost lies with the, with the state, but the international community has also a role in that which cannot be blocked by the invocation of sovereign, uh, sovereign, sovereignty. Sovereignty no longer exclusively protects states from foreign interference. It is a charge of responsibility where states are accountable for the welfare of their people. Collaboration is the key element here. First of all, we need to promote understanding of the need and importance of long-term approaches to prevent and protect populations for, from genocide, ethnic cleansing, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. We need to ensure that each nation does all it can do it can to prevent genocides and crimes against humanity. We also need strong ties with media and ensuring the freedom of press. The news media has responsibility to report on genocide-related issues freely and effectively. Thus, we can have an increased flow of independent information and analysis uh, to the parliamentarians about genocides and crimes against humanity. Parliamentarians need support of the public to increase the effectiveness of their scrutiny of government. There is a need to organize collective success to counteract international communities' collective failures in reacting to previous instances of genocide and mass violence. All, after all, one of the best mechanisms with which to identify policy objectives is to examine instances where collective action failed, for example, the Rwanda case, as um, my friend explained to you. The role of and responsibility of United Nations and the member states within the Security Council should be focused on the failure to act effectively. The recent case is the Syrian case. The victims are the population. If, if you support the government side or the opposition side, it's do, it doesn't matter. Uh, our friend said 70 million people are killed. 70, they are saying 70 or 80. It doesn't matter, but according to the report, 70,000. If we divide 10,000 from the opposition, 15,000 from the, from the government, 45,000 from the population. You see the situation. And the uh, the victim is the population, and the people, the opposition, is opposing to the government. The government is opposing to the opposition. Some of the states are uh, supporting opposition. The others are supporting the government side, but it doesn't matter. At the end, the people are, uh, are victim. Lesson, lessons must have been learned from past genocides, I think. A wait and see approach to a country's genocide or Massacre is just ignorance, and we just cannot afford to make any more mistakes when human lives are at stake. Irreversible damages cannot be 
restored. It is impossible. We need to press for action rather than just discussion. The United Nations has been adversely affected by the failure to avert uh, gen genocide. Finally, we must stand and voice not only to reform United Nations, European Union Organization of the Islamic Conference, Association of Southeast Asian Nations, Non-Aligned Movement, and South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation, and so on. It is, it is not enough to reform. It is, it, is, it is a must to act as soon as possible, as fast as possible to end, to end the genocide. Genocide or must, must atrocities. This is not time limited. Every time this type of, uh, of uh, uh, killings or uh, genocides are uh, occurring. Now, uh, from, the, from this explanation, I want to come to the Turkish case. We have another case, how we treat that one from the point of view of the Turks. We support the main ideas and objectives behind the concept of prevention of genocide in any way. Turkey is ready to assist international efforts to prevent genocide and mass atrocities in its region and throughout the world. Genocide, one of the most heinous crimes against humankind, is defined by the uh, 1948 convention to which Turkey is a party. 1948 convention has two, fo two faults, punishment and prevention. The international community, community is, to a certain degree, has been successful in punishing the crime of genocide uh, through ad hoc uh, judicial mechanisms in some examples, not in all the examples. The, uh, the prevention dimension, however, requires further attention. What we object is the abuse of such concepts for political purposes and link them to them, uh, link them to them to disputed uh, historical events. Prevention, one of the historical events is the Ar Armenian case in Turkey. Prevention of genocide is the future-oriented concept and we should ensure that this concept should not be hijacked as a tool to support specific narratives of the past. Very briefly, the crucial point is that concepts such as past genocides, recognition, denial, reconcilia reconcilia reconciliation, a remembrance of the past, and right to truth should not be abused for political motivations. Very important. The final years of the Ottoman Empire were a tragic period for the people that made made up the empire. Turks, Armenians, many others suffered immensely. The period needs to be understood in its entirety. The memory of all those who died during World War uh, I should be respected. The right lessons should be drawn from those terrible events. But to this properly, we need a reliable basis of information. This is exactly what we wanted to do with our proposal to form a joint historical commission with Armenia. Historical scientific, scientific commission with Armenia. We want to leave the propaganda war and get down to the bitter truth, whatever it is. Whatever the truth is should be accepted. We do not deny the suffering of the Armenians. What, what we oppose is presenting the tragic events of 1915 as a genocide perpetrated by one side against the other. The reality is more complex by stating the fact we are not running away from facing history. On the contrary, the reality should come out in its entire, entirety, not only based on the views of one side. The Armenian national narrative is more widely known in some countries. In fact, around, in around 20 out of 193 
uh, uh, UN members. Countries around the world, parli parliaments have made declarations supporting the Armenian view of history. In all these countries, the Armenian diaspora is active. And in each case, there were parliamentarians who voted against these pro-Armenian Armenian bills. In other words, there is no political consensus in that, on that subject, on this issue, even in countries where parliamentary decisions were taken. taken. There certainly is no scholarly consensus either. There certainly is no uh, scholarly consensus either, alongside many scholars who lean towards the Armenian view, there are quite a few non-Turkish historians who disagree with the genocide thesis. They, they do not deny the Armenian suffering, but they just do not think genocide is the right way to describe the events of 1915. It is often forgotten that genocide is a specific crime defined by international law. The 1948 convention tells us what genocide is and how it can be ascertained. A com competent international tribunal can determine if an event is genocide. Such a court decision exists for the Holocaust, for Rwanda, for Srebrenica, but no such decision exists for 1915. So nothing close to a, a, a legal consensus exists. Let me also comment on this issue of denial. Turkey is legitimately challenging the Armenian views of history. This is based on documents in archives. Many scholarly studies as well as the memory of millions of people in Turkey, it is unfair and incorrect to describe this as denial because we are ready, we are opening the archives. This is no problem, but uh, it, uh, it should be okay. I'm coming to the end in a very brief way. In fact, unlike the Holocaust, the events of 1915 are genuine historical controversy. There are respectable scholars on both sides of the debate. And therefore, there is, uh, we should work in order to solve the Armenian, Turkey, uh, Turkish Armenian case, uh, rather than with political motives, really with scientific motives. In such a way, we can reach a result. Uh, and uh, I'm ending uh, my speech here. Thank you very much. Thank you once again, Dr. Irbich.